from the KF 97 to the exhaustist event, note just that Masha is receiving another adjustment. How many times? Patch 1.8.78 is here and it has brought a lot with it. Hi guys, Kazuki here and in this video, we are going to take a look at patch note 1.8.78. Before moving forward, I want to thank you all for something. In our previous patch, we asked you guys to subscribe and help us grow this channel. And guess what? A lot of you actually did. Not only that, so many of you now getting the notification as well, which helps you stay updated. It means a lot to me that you guys actually listened and subscribed. I would like to thank you all from the bottom of my heart. With the assurance that we will keep working hard and deliver you the best content out there. Thank you all again and let's get back to the video. Let's start the video with hero adjustments. Silvana gets a major buff with reduced mana cost for her skills, making her more efficient in using her abilities. Specifically, skill 1 now uses 70 to 110 mana, down from 95 to 145. Skill 2 now uses 35 to 60 mana, previously it was 50 to 70. Hayabusa also sees an adjustment to enhance his jungling speed and a revert in energy cost for skill 2 which now costs 25 energy. Skill 1 is buffed to have a base damage from 190 to 260 to a consistent 200 to 260 across all levels. Skill 2 now costs 25 energy instead of 0 energy before. Masha receives a nerf, particularly affecting her damage in the mid to late game. The skill 1 now adds 2% extra physical attack as damage, down from 3%. Her ultimate's base damage has been reduced from 400 to 600 to 350 to 550. Lolita also sees a nerf in her passive shield strength. The shield of each stake is now 80 plus 16 per hero level, plus 60% of total magic power, down from 100 plus 20 per hero level, plus 80%. Let's move on to battlefield adjustments. Glowing Wand and Necklace of Burians. The previous merge of these two items has been temporarily reverted. They will be released as separate items again in a future patch, so keep an eye out for that update. Twilight Armor, similar to the above, adjustments planned for the Twilight Armor have been temporarily reverted and will be introduced in upcoming patch. Okay. The icon for Warex has been optimized to make it more distinctive. Additionally, this equipment now features improved synergy with the Bloodlust X, enhancing its effectiveness in battle. Cloak of Destiny is reworked to adjust its utility across different stages of the game. The new trigger condition now offers more benefits early in the game, but less so in the late game, aiming to increase the item stability and effectiveness throughout your matches. It's unique passive blessing, when your HP or mana drops below 50%, it now triggers a recovery of 15% HP or mana over 2 seconds. This passive has a cooldown of 40 seconds, making it a crucial factor in sustaining during fights. Queen's Wing trigger condition for its unique passive, Demonize, has been changed. It now triggers after dealing damage rather than before. Okay. This adjustment affects the timing and strategic use of this equipment in combat, potentially altering when you choose to engage or disengage. Next, let's move on to bug fixes. There was a problem where the Warcry talent wasn't functioning correctly with certain heroes. Specifically, Yuzong and Brody. The issue has been now resolved. This talent is crucial for enhancing hero abilities during combat. So this fix should improve the performance of players who rely on these heroes. A significant bug involving Lolita's ultimate ability has been corrected. Previously, activating her ultimate could simultaneously trigger two layers of her passive shield, which was not intended and could unfairly tilt the balance during team fights. With this fix, Lolita's shield activation will now function as originally designed, ensuring fair play and consistency in her defensive capabilities. Let's move on to system adjustments. 
The social feature on friends profile cards have been simplified by removing the unfollow button directly from the profile cards. You can still unfollow someone from their main profile page, keeping the interface clean and streamlined. For profiles that aren't in your friend list, the follow and view profile buttons have been transformed into icons for a cleaner look. Additionally, options like unfriend, invite to squad, and send gifts are now located in the secondary menu, making navigation more intuitive. There was a fix on the new squad verification badges. Now, squad leaders who are verified and wish to leave or transfer leadership must contact customer service to proceed, ensuring proper management and control over squad changes. <laughs> A new flex rank 5v5 event will be tested on the advanced server for two weeks. This event allows players to queue for ranked matches regardless of their rank, providing a unique opportunity to test skills against a broader range of players. The reporting system for 5v5 mode has been improved, with better option for reporting misconduct and optimized penalty rules to ensure fair play and a positive gaming environment. The visuals of the ethereal butterfly recall effect has been enhanced, making it more visually appealing. The peak brightness of basic attacks visuals has been reduced to offer a more comfortable viewing experience during gameplay. Argus Sacred Statue, Ages of Darkness will be available for exchange using Twilight Coins starting from May 1st. The feature of sending animated emotes in the lobby and during the hero selection phase has been added, allowing for more expressive interaction with teammates before the match begins. Moving to weekly free heroes. The weekly free heroes from 19th of April till 26th of April are as follows. The extra free heroes for the Starlet members are as follows. Now let's move on to surveys. First we have the surveys for Cloud M6 Prime skin. Here is the first design. Cloud in the design has some cool glowy armor that coats loads of pointy bits and is mostly purple and blue. He is standing with his bait monkey Dexter, who has also got a bit of that sci-fi look. Looks like they are ready for some futuristic action. Here is the next design. In this design, Claude is wearing armor that looks like it has a fire designs on it. He is holding a weapon with the same fiery design. Dexter the monkey is there as well. With a similar fire theme, it's like they are a team ready for heated battle. Here is the third design. Claude's goat armor that also about flames and energy, with swirls of purple and orange that makes it look like he is on fire. The shapes are wild and spread out like actual flames. Dexter is with him, also looking fiery and fierce. They both seem to be charged up and powerful like they have stepped right out of an intense battle. And we have the final design. In this artwork, Cloud is rocking a sleek black suit with sharp armor pieces that have red and purple essence. It looks modern and bit edgy. There is a cape that has a flame design on it. Dexter is by his side, matching with a similar fiery effect. They both have this cool ready for action vibe. This is the coolest one. I hope this wins. Let's check out the survey for revamped Freya's limited epic. In this design, we see Freya, she is wearing a striking outfit that includes a load of white and golds, which gives her a regal, almost angelic look. Her armor is stylish with purple and pink highlights. She has these huge wings behind her that really stand out and look like they could be made of feathers or maybe something magical. Her stance is confident and she is holding a sword that matches her armor. Next, we have the surveys for Phobia's special skin. The first design is called Blood Knight Death Bell. Phobia's ear looks like he just stepped out of a video game boss battle. He is sporting this white and red getup with flames that makes it look like his paints are on fire. His hair is spiked up like he just got a shock. He's got this one wild red streak across his face and that giant cloak weapon in his hand. It's got a wicked face on it and looks like it could ring your bell, literally. The next is called Runaway Engine. 
Povius here is looking like he just rolled out of a Mac shop. He's just showing off the guns, the muscle kind. He's also got his wild white hair with a touch of purple, making him look like he's not here to play. The boots and armor, total matching with the Mac theme. It says if he thought, why not bring a whole motorcycle to a sword fight? That's one way to make an entrance, right? And the last design is called Wild Wolf Disco. Fovius is back, this time with a look that screaming party animal meets a knight in a shining armor. He got this golden wolf head shield that's got more bling than a disco ball. The shield is all decked out with spikes, a wicked green, and eyes that looks like they are ready to start the party. He's even got the sword, disco on his pants, so you know he means business when it comes to a good time. Now let's move on to Roger's epic skin survey. Here is the whole design. Roger's outfit is like he's a general from a fantasy game. He's got this massive fleshy armor with a royal red and blue theme, gold trims and some serious shoulder pads that could probably double as a weapon. In his second pick, when Roger goes wolf mode, he turns into this fierce blue and red beast. He's got the same color theme as his human form, but it's all more wild and creature-like. The armor turns into fur and those shoulder pads become part of the beast head. Now let's check out the new design. Okay, so in Roger's new look, he's keeping it regal, but with a fresh twist. He's traded in some of the gold bling for a sleeker red and blue combo. And his coat's gotten even more flowy and epic. It's like he's gone from fantasy general to interdimensional wanderer. Wolf mod has leveled up too. He's ditched the darker views for a brighter, more eye-catching look. The armor has a bit more polish and flair. The mane is wider and those golden essence, they are shining brighter than before. This wolf's definitely the leader of the pack. Next, let's move on to the Fragment Shop update. The Fragment Shop update will go live on the 25th of April. First, we have the rare skin Fragment Shop, Roger Anubis, Argus Dark Draconic, Cyclops Deep Sea Rescuer, Fanny Royal Cavalry, and Irithyll Silver Cyclone have been added. If you have been waiting for any of these skins, now is your chance. Franco Apocalypse, Clint Rock and Roll, Natalia Phantom Dancer, Claude, Plunderous Pirate, Yi Sun Shin Major General have been removed. Let's move on to Hero Shop updates. Valir, Pakito, Masha, Nolan, Alpha, Khalid, Hayabusa, Granger, Helcut, Ruby, Harith, and Johnson. These heroes will be available in the shop. Change, Edith, Leslie, Kadita, Martis, Milsitar, Lilia, Claude, Lapu Lapu, Arlot, Noveria, and Iksha. These heroes will be removed from the shop. Let's move on to all the upcoming events and skins. First, we have the Exorcist event. Starting from May 18th to June 16th server time, new limited series skins for Kagura, Yuzong, Hayabusa, and Granger will be available at the Exorcist event. Enjoy a 50% discount on the first draw each day, and the first 10 draws guarantee a random permanent reward from the prize pool. Up next is the much awaited KOF 97 Bingo Draw event. It's going to start from April 24th to May 31st server time. Valir Kyo Kusanagi, Pakito Terry Bogart, and Masha, Mai Shiranoi collab skins are up for grabs, along with the exclusive ID tags. To check out these cool skin skill effects, watch this video right now. Next, 100 Diamonds Bonus Recharge Event. Starting from May 1st, recharge to 100 diamonds to unlock an epic skins, battle emote, and other fantastic rewards. Not only these, but there are many other events coming up. Check out this video to know more. Up next, we have Starlight Skins. Nolan Fashion Mogul skins will be available from May 1st to May 31st server time. Gaze upon the edge of the void. And then Helcut Dream Prowler skin will be coming soon from June 1st to June 30th server time. We also have a lucky box event. Revam Johnson Rake King skin available from 24th of April to May 7th server time. And finally, we have the Midnight Justice Summon event. Silvana's Midnight Justice will be available from May 15th to May 28th. First, the revamped skins Hellcut Exhaustial Executor and Hellcut Evolved Predator will return on the 24th of March. 
and the newly released skin Khalid Wave Strider will be available on the 7th of May with a promotional offer of 30% during the first week. Sand rises when I give the word. Next, the new skin Ruby Soul Reaper will become available on the 8th of June also with a 30% discount for the first week. Additionally, Geelong Summer Waves and Guinea World Summer Breeze will return on the same date, the 8th of June. Furthermore, from the 8th to the 14th of June, an area of skins including Nana Sunrays, Fanny Lifeguard, Hayabusa Sushi Master, Freya Beach Sweetheart, Kagura Summer Festival, Angela Summer Vibes, Cloth Lifeguard, Faramis Summer Sparks, Akai Summer Party, and Clint Sun and Send will be available at a substantial discount of 40% off. Now let's move on to all the other updates. First, let's check out this play chart of Kyokusanagi. Next, we have Terry Bogart's play chart. And finally, we have the beautiful artwork of Mai Shiranui. We also have the play charts for Johnson Drake King, Head Psychic, Green Chan and Hayabusa Exorcist, Khalid Wave Strider, and Alice Darkest Temptress. We also have the loading screen of Hayabusa and Granger Exorcist. These are all the upcoming exclusive emotes. Looks like we also have getting a custom action for Kadita. Here are the upcoming Starlight trail effect. Next, we have the new kill notification for KOF and Starlight. And finally, we have this new spawn effect. And we also have the KOF recall effect. So what do you guys think? Are you excited about all the updates? Are you ready to sell your houses? So that will be all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Keep supporting Kazuki Official.